Hello friends, I just want to begin today by thanking you for clicking on this video and I hope that the next few minutes improve your day. Today I want to talk to you about digital minimalism. What is it, why bother, and how to do it. Digital minimalism, much like any other form of minimalism, is all about intentionality. It's about using digital technology in its best possible way. At its core are three principles as described by Cal Newport's book, Digital Minimalism. Decluttering is based upon the idea that clutter is costly. It's a way of changing the way we view economics from focusing on money to time as the most valuable resource that we have. The idea is that things and clutter and stuff that builds up in our life detracts from our overall quality and from the amount of time that we're able to spend on what we want. It is also about managing and deleting the mass amounts of media that we have gained over the years. This can be things like unsubscribing from email lists or organizing all the files that you have on your desktop. Optimization is all about making the best use of the technology that we do have. Just like any other area of life, you want to get the best bang for your buck, and it's no different when it comes to digital technology. This means that we want to find websites, apps, tools that best allow us to streamline everything and get what we want from the technology in order to best help and optimize our life. Optimization asks, is this the best way to go about this. The principle behind intentionality is that being intentional is inherently satisfying. This means that deliberately focusing on the way you use technology provides a sense of satisfaction that being careless about technology does not. And even though there may be consequences or inconveniences that happen as a result of you stepping away from too much technology use. The benefit of having meaning and control over your use of it far outweighs that minor inconvenience. I'm not here to persuade you one way or another. I'm not some digital Nazi who's gonna yell at you if you don't get rid of all your digital media and burn your laptop with fire and throw your phone out the window into the river. I'm just here to kind of share what has worked for me and what really the benefits I have found from stepping away from digital media. The first big thing that I've noticed is that I have a lot more time to do the things that I want. I have a time to read books, to go hiking, to play sports, to do the things that really, the things that I've always wanted to do, but have never found the time when just consuming my life with the screen time. On top of this, I've noticed that I find greater enjoyment out of that leisure time that I do have. And the reason for this is that I'm not worried about missing out what other people are doing. Sometimes that fear of missing out can manifest itself into believing that others are having more fun than you. And it's not hard to believe that when people perfectly curate their Instagram posts and you just look through it and you see, wow, that person just seems to be having a good time and I want to be there too. And the way my life doesn't really compare to their life right now. When I don't have that constantly attacking me, when I don't, when I'm not constantly looking at other people's lives and what they're doing, I'm not really worried about missing out and I can just enjoy what I'm doing. It doesn't matter what other people are doing. Finally, and somewhat counterintuitively, I found that I've been much more social since I've left social media. The reason for this is that I no longer have those low quality interactions where I just click like or add a quick comment to someone's post. I now have to be intentional about meeting with the friends that I really care about, about, about messaging them, about meeting up, about really finding out about what's going on in their lives because I can't find out any other way. I have to see them. I have to spend time with them. I have to contact them intentionally and in order for me to be involved in their life. <laughs> There's 
no real answer to this, as everyone has a little bit of different way of going about it depending on what their situation is. However, I will give you a few basic tips on how to begin your digital minimalism journey. The first thing I would recommend is creating rules for yourself to follow. Although we often think of rules as somewhat restrictive, what they do is create set parameters for you to use technology. And within those parameters, you're able to operate. It also creates it just so easy because the rules, as long as you follow them, you know what to do and you know when to do it and when not to do it. It makes life very straightforward. An example of a rule that I have is that I don't keep my phone in my room at all. I don't charge it in my room. It's downstairs. It's difficult to get. That way, I never use my phone in my bed, either in the morning or at night. Another rule that you could do is limit the amount of time you spend on email, maybe checking it only once daily, or checking only sports pages or certain news sites only once, instead of scrolling through them whenever you feel bored. The second thing I would recommend is taking a break from digital content. Although this may be difficult, as the old adage says, you don't know what you're missing till you try it. And I think this really rings true with technology use. We've just become so accustomed to using it. It has overcome most of our life for the last 10 years, the last decade. It has really grown and grown and we pretty much can't leave the house or do anything without our smartphones on us. But as we step away, we may start to realize our own addiction or our own reliance on it that has way surpassed what we originally intended. And this is a good time to just start questioning your own use of it, you know, do you really need to use it as much as you need to? By stepping away, you're able to kind of see what your habits are really like and how automatically you are doing these things. Taking a break also allows you to explore other areas of life that you may find more meaningful or more satisfying than staring at a screen all day. The final thing I would recommend is when necessary, take drastic action. And all I mean by this is that sometimes creating the life you want means taking big steps that are out of the norm. And an example of this, as if you see my last video, is that I deleted all social media. And for a 21 year old university student, that's pretty rare. But I just realized that the power that was in those tools in Facebook and Instagram, I just couldn't resist. And I needed to step away from them in order to create the time and the life that I wanted to create. There you have it. That's what I consider the basics of digital minimalism. Congratulations. You are now well on your way to becoming a digital minimalist. Thanks for watching.